Hello, y'all. Welcome to Jackalope Tales, Urban Legends, and Music, where we uncover, is it real or is it a jackalope tale? I'm your host, Charles Mooney. And I'm Lisa Umbarger. And Charles and I are founding members of the Toadies. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we're podcasting. Yeah. We started a band, played for a while, quit, and then came to Podcasting fell in our lap. So many years later. I know. It worked out great. Yeah, totally did. Hey. And we're really excited about today's episode. Oh, yeah. We're going to be talking about a couple guys who are defined as toxic. Toxic bandmates. Yeah. So we're calling the episode Toxic Shock Syndrome. And I am talking about Mark E. Smith, the lead singer of The Fall. And I'm going to talk about Mike Love of the Beach Boys. Did he exhibit love? No. (sighs) Mostly dickery. (laughs) (laughs) So it should have been Mike Dick. Right. (laughs) Mike Dickery. (laughs) Yeah, he's kind of a jerk, and we'll talk about that. I know. I'm I'm ready for it. Uh, Speaking of toxic, uh, we've had an experience with a toxic individual. We did. Yeah. We did. And uh, it was, uh, we had some interesting rules placed on. Yeah, that was the part that got toxic, the rules. Yeah. The no dancing. Mm -hmm. No one can be in public and dance. Right. Right. Um, And people don't know this about Mark Reznicek, but he was a really, really good championship. Um, What is that? The Irish step dancing? Oh, yeah. Uh, You're right. I remember him doing the the dances and we'd be like, oh, my God, he's about to break it out. We got to move back. Yeah. Because he needed room. Yes. Depending on how many beers he had. Right. When he had beers, his shirt was off while he did it. <laughs> but, um, but he's a really excellent Irish step dancer. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Oh, I know. I know. I mean, I loved dancing. Like, I mean, like the bands that opened before us. Right. Kind of get a little jig on. Right. In front and, of the stage and just get up there and, you know, just. Oh, oh, I hit the sprinkler the a few times. Right. And. I mean, when it came down to me leaving, that was part of my reason for leaving is because I was told not to dance. Well, I, you know, I don't blame you. I stuck it out because I'm not a good dancer. So, But that bit Um, me in the ass because when I did the sprinkler trifecta after I'd left the band, I injured my shoulder. So I know I can't even do the robot anymore. (laughs) (laughs) It's like I've had to put up my dancing shoes. (laughs) (laughs) Hung them up on the door. Yeah. Also, there was the no eating of Mexican omelets from IHOP because everyone got pink eye one tour. Oh God, so damn contagious. So horrible. Oh, I don't think IHOP omelets cause pink eye. No, no, I don't think so. That was, uh, come on, that was an excuse. Um, Uh, but there was, yeah, I was told that band becomes comes before school. Uh, let's see. I mean, oh my god, oh, they happen to pass a rain stick (laughs) to speak. (laughs) (laughs) I know, no, it really did. And then it's like, there'd there'd be just rain stick chaos because you're trying to shake it and make it like I want to talk and then they're all everyone else is bitching so no one can hear the rain stick right and I'm trying to obey the rule but yep Look what and, that got me. Right. I was and never Mark heard. Mark the rain stick. <laughs> he did. Because so, he's like, I like the way it sounds. Yeah. And he danced with a rain stick, too. He would. Yeah. Anyway. But yeah. And then uh, we started to have to travel together, like go to the show together. Yeah. And everyone would get out of the same vehicle like a <laughs> clown car. <laughs> so, yeah. So it was just weird. Um, yeah. It was nothing that was harmful. No, no. Um, It just, I think when we started things and it's like, we're just friends having a fun time, loving music. And then all of a sudden rules start coming along. We hate rules. Oh God. Yeah. To be told what to do. Right. I'm not 30. Right. I made Charles (laughs) shave his head. He actually has a full head of hair. (laughs) That's my rule. And now I've had it so long and I have to shave it. 
every two days. Right. Yeah. You know? Oh, it's yeah. embarrassing. Yeah. yeah Damn you're getting you. a little long up on the top. You need <laughs> to get busy. You. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some rules stick for a long time. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, to go on about our guys. So the one I'm talking about, Mark E. Smith, uh, not Marky, Mark E. Yeah. And what does E stand for? <sighs> eloquent? I don't know. Let's just say Edward. Edward. I like that. Cause that's a good generic way. Yeah. Um, I'll go with it. Okay. Edward. Sounds like a good one. <laughs> so Eddie, uh, no, <laughs> let's see. So Mark uh, was considered a brilliant, can cantankerous, relentless, mercurial, infuriating, and incomparable kind of person. Holy cow, you got the dictionary. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm telling that I had to rehearse that one a few times before I could get it all laid out right. Uh, but I mean, he was like that all the time and sometimes at the same time. Uh, do you like the fall? I love the fall. They are, they are very cool. But did you really ever think of them as one guy being the fall and then the rest of the members were just kind of throwaways? No, not at all. I mean, to me, they seem and I think I saw them once, but they seem very cohesive. Yeah. And I never did get the. I mean, you, there wasn't Internet at the time, so I didn't no. know that there were problems and a lot of member. Yeah, I didn't know much and, about this either until I started I mean, looking British into it. People look alike. So when they <laughs> toured, they all look the same to me. They all have funny teeth. <laughs> That's that makes them stand out, doesn't it? Uh, but the fall, it's crazy because they've released 32 albums that began in 1979. That is, that is crazy. I have maybe five, and I thought I had most of their albums. Yeah. You might have the five good ones. I don't know. maybe Because sometimes cow. when there's that many of them. Uh, That's a lot of records. It's a bunch. Uh, but his, in, his music, which inspired obsessive devotion, was often overshadowed by his erratic and authoritarian personality. I mean, fist fights, firings, frazzled nerves, onstage meltdowns. It was kind of like the lore of the band. Did you ever see them live? Yeah, I, I I think I did see them live one you time. You did, yes, and nothing violent or no. It was nasty just I don't remember out. anything crazy. I wish hmm. I did see something crazy. Right, it'd make it definitely interesting. But now I think we're going to kind of do a bullet point kind of podcast today. Yeah, because I have bullet points, and I think you have bullet points. I do. I love bullet points. I do too. Straight to the story. But uh, so th these are things that came out about him. He had passed away. Uh, what year did he pass away? 2018. 60 years old. Oh, so, man. He was but, that old. Yeah, a lot of these things came to light after his passing. So Make people were afraid to talk about <laughs> it or whatever? I think so. I mean, because okay. he'd just come right over and bite you with his British teeth. So, <laughs> but... Smith reportedly fired a studio engineer for ordering a salad. So that's why his teeth are all messed up. What's he eating? Everyone have a salad. I don't know. Everyone was probably eating fish and chips. And oh, okay. he's like, you fucker eating a salad. That's not for it. So. Okay. Throw him out. Uh, Smith once fined his drummers five pounds every time they played the Tom Tom. And one of the drummers that he used was hired and fired nine times by him. You'd think that drummer would get his lesson after the first couple. My first word about that drummer is pussy. <laughs> right. That's <laughs> why he's got nine lives. <laughs> oh my god yes nine lives with the band he's a pussy All well right. i mean god talk about a damn roller coaster ride you're like yeah. honey i'm back with the band right. honey i'm out honey i'm back and yeah. do that nine times no it's so bipolar no i mean we fired mark what three <laughs> right and he kept coming that was back it. yeah but it wasn't like real firings we just Nah. Opened up the door and he wandered out in the street. So it wasn't <laughs> with like the was, rain stick and right. no shirt on. Yeah, <laughs> <Dancing>. <laughs> uh, you go be Irish on right. Beach Street. Oh, we had to put one of those uh, 
homing devices on him <laughs> so we could find him. Yeah, that was before we you could track your phone. Right. Uh, uh, he fired bandmate Mark Riley on his wedding day. God. And uh, Michael didn't like the fact Riley was questioning the writing credits. That was part of the reason he fired him. And he also didn't like the fact that he danced to Deep Purple in a nightclub during an Australian tour in 1982. <laughs> so speaking of dancing and restrictions. Right. Sounds familiar. <clears throat> it depends on what he danced to by so, Deep Purple. So I wonder, he fired him on the wedding day. I wonder if he was one of the groomsmen. Oh. And right before <laughs> his bride walks down, he leans over and is like, so anyway, you're out of the band. <laughs> Actually, I moved from the mic. Yeah. <laughs> He leans over and dramatic like, effect. Yeah, he's like, oh, You're out of the band. Oh. And he's up there, like, and then his bride walks down and he's crying, and his bride doesn't know if he's crying because he's right. out of the band or he's touched she looks by beautiful. the emotion of, oh, right. Poor guy. I know. Talk about ruining a day. Right. It's like no cake for Mike, for Mark. So uh, let's see. He was also known for wrestling an NME magazine reporter. Uh, the reporter was Mark Beaumont, and Mark Beaumont even re uh, stated that during the fight, uh, he was wrestled to the ground by uh, Mark, and then Mark attempted to bite him on the neck. Like a vampire. I'm telling you, those damn teeth keep coming into I play know. here. He keeps biting people. It's like a toddler. <laughs> <laughs> Very good analogy. Uh, he punished his bands for playing lousy shows. Even, in fact, after one gig, he gave one slap across the face per bandmate. Ooh. How do you, I mean, oh. Yeah. That, uh, I know no. you wouldn't have stood up to that. Yeah. that. I mean, the no dancing was okay, but. If you slap me, oh, bitch, it's bitch gonna die. <laughs> There's no slapping. Uh, 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 nah. Uh, uh, uh. nah, it's just like no, no. Now it's on another level. I mean, I I would love to be a fly on the wall and witness that, and because I'm so yeah. curious about did I know. were they okay with this? Were I they, know. Is it, it is it like PE thing? class where the PE uh, guide lines them up and just goes down and pops them. I don't know, but it's insane to no. put up with that. Uh, now, they also claim that Mark envisioned the 9 11 attacks uh, when he had been let out of jail for causing a fight at one of their shows with some of the uh, people in attendance. So he got hit on the head and then he could tell the future. Well, he was talking to a cop outside of the jail and uh, he, it was in lower Manhattan across from the nine 11 towers. And he claims that he had a vision while he was talking, but see when you get into all this kind of stuff, because in the early days of the fall, he also financed the band by giving tarot readings to local housewives. Like Tupperware. <laughs> <laughs> or Kirby vacuums. Right. I mean, just something is, to get in their house. Just a strange guy. <sighs> it, very eclectic, that's for sure. But their music can be kind of yeah. strange, too, which yeah. I love. Right. I don't want boring. I mean, and they're definitely not boring. Um, and then... Suede drummer, the drummer of Suede. Yeah. Uh, Matt Osman. Uh, he was, Suede was going to be opening just a handful of shows for the fall. And he had been told by many a friend that Mark is a pain in the ass and to a lot of the opening acts. So he came in kind of on guard, ready for anything. But it turned out to be a great experience. He really enjoyed opening for them. They got all got along. But then a couple days later, Suede, Suede is in the car going somewhere and they hear an interview with Mark Smith on British radio. And the DJ asks Mark, do you like any of the bands who are calling you an influence? And Mark says, well, like who? DJ says, well, like Suede. And then there was a long dramatic pause. And Mark said, never heard of them. Holy shit. And they just toured with them. 
But is he just fucking with him? I mean, see, I feel like he's being contrary and having fun with it. I really want to believe that he's not being a complete dick. He's having fun with it. I mean, that is kind of funny as hell. He's like, never heard of him. (laughs) And they even open for a few shows. Uh, And then, uh, for example, he's not that big on technology. Uh, He couldn't vote in England's Labor Party leadership election because he was disinterested in going online. I guess you have to go online in order to vote. So I'm just imagining this guy who has like the foil hat and just right. kind of fearful of anything happening and sits and does the tarot cards to see what's going to be. Yeah. He's, he's got that connection, that sixth sense. Uh, and then uh, in 2008, he was investigated by the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Write that on a donation check. Why? Uh, because he boasted killing squirrels who were eating his garden fence. Squirrels don't eat wood. <laughs> What's it made out of? Acorns? <laughs> I guess it's kind. Of, acorns are kind of woody. Yeah. <laughs> he has a. So he has a. He has a whole fence made of stacked acorns. Of st- oh my god! Seeds. With glue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, an art project. Yeah. The squirrels are up there like, this is the best bird feeder ever. Oh my God. And they're all happy and thinking everything's great. And then and he, he walks set out it up a, to take pot shots. Right. Or, or he something. walks out with a shoe and okay. like whacks him on the head. And those British can have some big boots. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. And then uh, the band had recruited a drummer less than an hour before their gig at the 1999 Reading Festival. And uh, it turned out to be the manager of the Chemical Brothers, Nick Dewey. Oh, that's cool. And that's who they brought in. It's like, I guess they needed someone quick. And they're like, can you play drums? An hour so he before, did and he played a show in front of that many people at a festival. Yeah. Now, whether this happened before the show or right after, because they were probably going to use him for some other shows, uh, he got into a fight with Nick, who they just hired on. Uh Mark was asleep in the bus and a bandmate was showing Nick around the bus to kind of show him where everything was. And there's Mark sleeping. So the bandmate hit Mark in the face just kind of to wake him up. Oh no! And I guess Mark thought it was Nick. And so they proceeded to have a fight. And then at the next gas station, who knows where, probably in the boonies, But uh, they left him. They left the drummer at the gas station and just kept driving. So Holy cow. So, you know what? Would you ever wake anyone up by touching their face in any way? Like hitting them? Oh, that's dangerous. You don't. So his bandmate, I think, was being a little little shady. It was his moment. It's probably like that little bitch slap me for not playing well uh-huh yeah. i mean and you're at, like, boom when you're like that was close when you're like that <laughs> when you're like that with your band you can't expect constant respect they're gonna try and get a pot shot exactly mm-hmm. so i'm i get it it happens because i'm sure we took a few pot shots at todd i didn't <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't. I don't. No. Okay. Well, there was that picture we made a T-shirt of. We did. That's a whole other story. He did that himself. <laughs> oh, he did. He did. We did. We just made sure you got the. We photo. made fun. Of him. <laughs> <laughs> there is but, a Where's Waldo T-shirt uh, somewhere. I around. hope someone still has one. If it, any, if anyone has a, the Where's Waldo Toadie shirt, yes, uh, we will pay money for that. Yeah. Or at least or, post it. Or post Send it, it to us so we can see it. Well, yes, we'll post it. Yeah. Talk about it. Yeah. Because I think mine fell apart. We'll have to, <laughs> we'll have to, we'll have to color block. I mean, we'll have to do the little pixelated things. You, yeah. 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 It'll be a very tiny pixelated area. <laughs> um, They're starting to understand. <laughs> All right. So you've got... Mike Mr. Love. Mr. Mike Love. And I love the Beach Boys. Yeah. I really yeah. do. Um, when I was a kid, Mike Love was my favorite one behind Brian, of course. And because, your dad loved the Beach Boys too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so when we first got a tape player in our car, mm-hmm. 
one of the first tapes we bought, Beach Boys. Ah, uh, it's road music. Endless summer. And yeah. um, so we played the Beach Boys a lot. I know all of their albums front to back. Uh, um, and it was a big part of my childhood. Yeah. And I liked Mike Love because he was this charismatic um, oh. guy. And he was usually the one who spoke whenever yeah. they did interviews. True, true. And um, so he became kind of like the face of the Beach Boys for me. And those goddamn harmonies. Right. Holy hell. Right. Yeah. And when I watched Impressive. him sing, he was, you know, the one that was um, the most charismatic on stage and was the most alive on the stage. Yeah. Um, so I watched him a lot. Okay. And um and I really liked him. Yeah. Until Ooh. um I got a little bit older and I was still a kid, but I started hearing some interviews and he was he would talk shit about the rest of the band in the interviews. So you kind of knew he was a dick before you even looked into this. Yeah. Uh -huh. Or at least in my head he became a dick because I was like, yeah. why is he talking about his bandmates? Yeah. Like that. Huh. And um, but he would say, you know, totally crappy things about uh, especially Brian. Wow. And, um, really? the, and Brian's the one with all the issues. And he is the genius of oh. the Beach Boys. Everyone knows that. It's right. really not hard to go, okay, who is the one that's the most important integral part? Of oh, the yeah. Beach Boys? Yeah. Brian. And he, when he started attacking Brian in interviews, then I was like, uh, I don't know if he's that good of a uh. guy. Because Brian has like schizophrenia, stage fright. I mean, and addiction. Yeah, he's got addiction oh, stuff too. Man. And, uh, you know, and a lot of the Wilson brothers did. They did. Yeah. Um, so, you know, for him to, to attack Brian, who was basically his gravy train, mm. kind of sucks. So true. And um, so that's when I started thinking <clears throat> he was a dick. And I pretty much bailed on the Beach Boys oh. until Brian started putting out more stuff. Oh, Like okay. Smile and that box set, the uh, Pet Sounds box set. Oh, uh, yeah. Which was amazing. So um, I have my bullet points of things that Mike Love has done. Okay. Yep. I'm ready so, for this. We've been bullet pointing all yeah, this episode. Because there's so many things and it's hard to create a story. Yeah. You just have to get the bullet points. Yeah. So the bullet points of a dick. <laughs> um, so possibly the most famous thing that Mike Love did that was just a jackass thing to do mm -hmm. was um, the Hall of Fame speech in 1988. For the Beach oh, Boys. Okay. So, um, what year was it? You said 1988. 88. Okay. Yeah. So, um, Brian Wilson was newly sober, was just figuring out, um, how to be in public again. Oh, so it was kind man. of fragile. Yeah. And, um, Mike Love during his speech, because that's who everyone wanted to hear. You want to hear what Brian has to say, right? Of course. And so during yeah. his speech, he was like, pacing back and forth behind him and like grabbing the mic and Mike just, love was doing. Yeah. That? Oh. So Mike love was just being a dick and, and Brian's just trying to get these words out. Yeah. Stage fright. And oh just God. To talk. Yes. Right. And Mike loves being a dick, trying to distract him and, oh. and probably on cocaine. I don't know. Allegedly. Oh. Anyway, so he's being crazy. And then when he, he uh, gets up to uh, speak after Brian, yeah, he, totally disses all of these other artists um oh that are being inducted God. and so much so that when um bob dylan uh spoke about it later he was like i'm just happy that he didn't talk about me because he talked oh. about so many other people oh my it was a God. big thing and, and it was a totally dick move i mean we talk about <clears throat> artists all the time but yeah there's a reverence that should happen in the hall of fame and, and during your speech and a gratitude, oh, yeah. I think. Oh yeah. The Kanye stuff. Like when he did that with Taylor Swift, right. it's like, that's just a little award ceremony. This right. is the fucking this hall is, of fame. Yeah, to me, this is different. And, and uh, cause if you've ever been there, you know, it's everyone you ever loved as a kid, as a musician, wow. there's stuff's there. It's, it's incredible. So have some reverence, dude. Yeah. And quit being a dick to your bandmate. Yeah. Yeah. And um, okay, so let's talk about some of the other stuff. Um, he made the band scrap the Smile album. What? And it wasn't completed till four decades later. Oh God! And that was the one that everyone wanted to hear. Um, it was a change of pace for the Beach Boys. It was yeah. different. Yeah. So um, he didn't like it. 
And so really? he, he forced the band to scrap it. And fans like myself still blame him and hate him kind of for it. I don't really hate, hate him. Yeah. We, we no, still consider but... him the villain. Yeah. And, uh, and do you like the Smile album? Yeah, I do. Okay. I do. And oh. um, Mike <clears throat> then went on to sue Brian Wilson because of a free promotional CD that was given out for the release of the Smile album, claiming that it damaged the band's reputation. No. Yeah. It's like he hated it, kept it from coming out, finally did, and then he's still pissed. So it's right. like. Yeah. Because Brian put it out oh. on his own, right? He. Yeah, he was like, I have to do this. Yeah. And then Mike Love shits on him by suing. Oh, him. my God. Uh, then Mike sued longtime Beach Boy Al Jardine for touring under the headline Al Jardine of the Beach Boys. He said that you shouldn't be able to say oh my God. that you were with the Beach Boys. Wow. Right. That's a dickish move. Mm -hmm. um, he donated a bunch of money to Tipper Gore to help censor pop music. Mm. And it was kind of like he was shooting at his enemies. He thought that everyone else, it was a competition and everyone else was wow. an enemy of the Beach Boys. So and it's like, like he's trying to get on the good side of all those yeah. older people that just love the right. Beach he was Boys. Like, Here's some money, Tipper. Oh, my uh, God. Yeah. Take care of my enemies. Uh huh. Yep. Yep. Keep the Beach Boys on the top. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my um, God. And then he launched the Brian's Back campaign. And he did this without asking Brian Wilson. No. Brian Wilson was still fragile and a little unstable. And he started this whole campaign without Brian's permission that Brian was going to be back on tour and come see the Beach Boys play. Wow. Right. And it quickly resulted in Brian sinking into another relapse because Brian felt God. forced. So he did show up. Oh, yeah. He's a good guy. I mean, when bossy Mike Love is right doing all that right. shit. Oh my god! Um, he kicked all of the original Beach Boys off of a tour one time. What? Right. It became the Mike Love Show. Right, and then he puts the guy from <laughs> Full House on drums. Oh, John Stamos. No. Remember? No, the was it Kokomo Uncle, times? Uncle Joey. Oh, yeah, my. I think it. Yes, God, I think well, that he was. He may have been on the. Oh, God. I think he was Kokomo Times. I think, yeah, yeah. I don't know if my timeline's correct, but yeah. So Joey, Uncle Joey, was on drums. Oh, I, I'm not gonna go to there here. There are two things I hate about that era: Full House and Kokomo. Right. Nasty Gross. ass shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. So that's the next thing. He oh. wrote Kokomo. Oh. So worst and then song ever. He also sullied the legacy of the Beach Boys. I think. So he cheapened oh. it. He sold it out and you know, <sighs> Kokomo was on commercials and oh, it was nasty. he put it on shit oh, products. Oh god. Like motor oil or whatever. <laughs> Men's edible underwear. <laughs> the good vibrations men un edible underwear or whatever. Oh my god. That's not true. I made that up. But that's good was, though. But yeah, see, we'll so do he it. cheapened the legacy. <laughs> no, he cheapened the legacy of the Beach Boys. Damn. Which I think is the worst part of it. Oh, and then to have claimed all that other stuff was ruining their legacy and ruining their style. Right. And when he to, is the one. When he's releasing Kokomo. Right. And God. then touring is the only dude that was in the band and saying, I am the Beach Boys. Oh, my God. And didn't you say he's a cousin? Yes. To all the rest of them? He's a cousin of the Wilson those That's fucking right. cousins. I know. Oh. Don't mess with your cousins. Oh, no. <laughs> don't marry them. Don't do right. anything yeah. with them. Don't sing with them. Uh. Don't let them in your house. <laughs> Even if they have a casserole dish. Yeah. Like oh, QVC. Thanksgiving. They'll try and sneak in. Yeah. Yeah. Fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. The soothing sounds of the kazoo. Oh, that's what would have saved Kokomo. I think Putting so. Putting a kazoo in. Right. And also, maybe if they played mm. the kazoo at him, it would maybe it would disarm his toxic traits. Ah, kind of like a cross in Dracula. Yeah, just like, you pull out the kazoo. Oh and... <laughs> <laughs> you have to probably do it a few times, and then it's like you see those black smoke. 
he yeah. cowers from it. <laughs> Hell yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. So Lone Star Salute time. The Lone Star Salute, where we talk about anything that's a one star review. Yeah. Of a musician, a venue, an album. Yeah. A performance. Kind of tie it into the people we've talked about because we want to share those opinions that show that these people might suck. Right. So. Yeah. And it's going to make you listen to it because, or check it out because it's funny. Yeah. Oh, they're great. Sometimes they are really good. Uh, the one I've got. Yeah. Is for the Falls album. One of their 32. Uh, Reformation post TLC. I the band TLC. Means. Well, it was done in 2007. Was TLC. Yeah, it's probably T- TLC. Oh. And then. So he like covered scrubs. <laughs> no one knows scrubs. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. You think he probably did? <clears throat> Could have been. Could have been. Okay. Um, this review is by uh, Stereo Gum. Oh, so they don't usually talk shit about an album. Well, they felt the need to talk of shit about this fall okay, album. Okay, let's hear that one. Uh, they go on to say, if you were curious as to how, and they call him M.E.S., so now okay. mess. Mark is mess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you were curious as to how mess felt about losing another set of bandmates, consider the comment he made to Q magazine that the title of this album. So I guess he's not, it's not TLC, uh, but the title of the album referenced the fact that he'd gotten rid of all the traitors, liars, and cunts from the group. That's a quote. Uh, if Gosh. that if that weren't enough, he put some salt in the wounds by lyrically declaring this album to be the truest expression of the fall sound. As well as we know, there is no fall sound other than the snarky snarl of Mess himself. The band can be what it wants to be as long as he's at the head of the class. Like most albums of this period... Reformation sure does drag on for a lot longer than it needs to. Like those former band members, you'll likely be ready to walk away from the whole thing for the sake of your sanity. Holy shit. And you said they don't usually talk shit. No. Those are Woo. old words that are. I'm someone. I mean, maybe he tried to bite someone <laughs> at stereo gum. <laughs> someone <laughs> does not like the man. Oh, well, yeah. you can kind of see why he does give him ammo right. to hate him. Right. So. And I'm sure uh, the enemy guy was not the only guy, the oh. only journalist he had no. beef with. Oh, no. So there had like to be more. But And you've got one, too. I got one. And this is a really weird, funny one. And I have not been able to find this album. The album is called Mike Love, Brian Johnston, and David Marks of the Beach Boys <laughs> Salute NASCAR. <laughs> That's a very wordy title. And this is by oh, Spam God. is a type of meat. That's the reviewer. Which, uh, by the way, Spam is a type of meat. I love your review. So uh, here we go. <laughs> and uh, Spam says, this is a review of the incredibly niche, obscure, and forgotten album, Mike Love, Brian Johnston, <laughs> and David Mark of the Beach Boys Salute NASCAR. Oh. It is an absolute <laughs> abomination of an album, and I have no idea where to fucking start. <laughs> I don't even remember how I found out about the album, and it's been living in my head rent-free for about a week. Oh. Please help. Ah. So there's little information about this album in general, and I'm still not entirely sure how it came about, what the purpose is, or why the hell it even exists. <laughs> 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 fucking NASCAR. God. And... It's literally lying because Brian Johnston isn't even on this shit album and what? neither is David Marks. What? Right. Some people say that Bruce is on it, but I can't hear him. Pretty sure it's just the producer, but we'll get to that uh. later. I can't say for a fact that David Marks is not on this album. He definitely does not play, but his name is on it. Because at the time, there were rumors of him associating with the Beach Boys again. Uh -huh. So I'm almost 99% positive Mike just said, LMAO, I don't give a fuck with his name on it. <laughs> he would be a dick like that. <laughs> he would. Yep, yep. Makes sense. Right? 
If you hadn't already guessed, this is another shitty cover album <laughs> since the album doubles as an ad for NASCAR. All the songs are about the beach. Just kidding. They're about cars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. This album, this album is essentially a Mike Love solo album, and it's not but it's not because I'm almost positive Mike did nothing except sing on the record. The producer literally did all of the work. The dude sings background vocals and Brian's parts on a few of the songs, plays most of the instruments, and mix the thing. Speaking of which, what the fuck is going on in the studio? Did they ever once just sit down and consider what it sounded like? <laughs> question mark, question mark, question mark. Ooh. The production is so ass. I <laughs> almost... <laughs> I almost laughed out loud when I heard don't worry baby because it sounded so bad. Oh. I must really love torturing myself with these ass Beach Boys albums because <laughs> damn, what the hell am I doing with my life? I really oh. wasted 25 minutes of my life on a straight to gas station album that's just a <laughs> giant advertisement. I don't really know what else to say other than I hated this and I don't know how I got here. <laughs> <laughs> straight to gas station I know, right? those are the best because those are never bought either shit. oh god that's just nasty to promote nascar right i mr. mean nascar is nascar right. but right to oh god what a dick and then he didn't even do much on the album and he probably got paid out the ass yeah he totally got paid and it was a giant advertisement now who ruined the legacy of the beach boys let's ask again because yep. Anyway, he's putting his name on all sorts of crap, oh. and that's one of them. So, oh God, does he even <clears throat> perform anymore? Do you know? Oh yeah, oh. it's his money train, man. He's got to do oh. it. Oh, is it like at Windstar or the casinos and things? I like don't know. That. We should pull it up and find out we when they're playing to. again, and go and yell. Oh God, at him. <laughs> and if we could find that record, try and have him sign that stupid record. <laughs> Oh we have to God. look at all that the gas stations. Ideal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Right next to the, uh, I don't know. What's White there? cross speed, <clears throat> trucker speed. Yeah. Tire, <laughs> tire pounders. <laughs> Those little bats. <laughs> all right. And air fresheners. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. You know what? It's been a good show. We've. It's been toxic, it's but been we got so through toxic, it. And this is the happy ending. We washed ourselves of the toxicity. Right. Uh, and, you know, I'm thinking back about this episode, and I'm wondering, how would you ever get pink eye from a burrito <laughs> or breakfast in general? Don't blame the omelet. Blame the player. <laughs> because right. it's probably a jackalope tail. <laughs> But these stories, I mean, we found a lot of this information. Right. And so these are true stories. These are bullet points that um, I mean, you can't dispute bullet points. No, I mean, you don't. People are mad about them and they make yeah. it into bullet points. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and, you know, it's what amendment is it for the, having bullets and guns? Oh, whatever that amendment is yeah. for bullet points, the right to carry the right to carry bullet points. <laughs> <laughs> the right to post bullet points. Oh, we man. got that yeah. Second Amendment. Yeah, but... Second Amendment rights because I can write it. I have the freedom <laughs> to do bullet points. Yeah, just don't overshoot. So everyone, <laughs> yeah, don't overshoot. Don't, don't, uh, do don't no. But you can keep on listening. Yeah, and thank you for that. Every single week, we appreciate you. And um, please check out our show notes. And uh, find us on all the socials. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, subscribe, rate, leave us reviews. There's even a link to where you can send Lisa and myself a direct text message. I mean, we are the only ones that are doing this. So. No, dick, <laughs> no dick pics, please. Yeah. Oh, wow. Right. Oh, shit. I gave him an idea. <laughs> Don't do it. Way to go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, definitely just, uh, watch our YouTube podcast if you, or just listen on all the podcast right. streaming sites. And then join us next time as we ask, is it real or is it a jackalope tail? Mm. Or is it a gas station CD? Your dog's licking my leg. <laughs> That's my foot. <laughs> <laughs>
This episode is brought to you by Undetermined, the podcast. Friends don't let friends talk about shit alone. Join John, Matt, and special guests as they discuss all of the things that matter and some that don't. It's a fun and insightful romp through music, politics, and life with a kitchen table intimacy. Catch Undetermined, the podcast on all streaming services today.